keltische Musik von A bis Z. Schottenradio gehört zu mir. Hi, I'm Valerie Casey from the band Leathen and you're watching Shotten TV. Welcome again to another edition of Schotten TV. I am Basil Wolfrein and today uh, I welcome you to a Leodon special. Uh, a few bonnie lassies directly from Ireland came to my Wii studio and so, well, I feel a wee bit like in heaven and um, what can I say? Hello. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Very well. Thank you. It's lovely Great. to be here. Well, yeah, it's it's, it's a pleasure to yeah. have you here, and um, we will talk about your band. We yeah. will talk about the history. What does it mean to be an Irish musician? And we should talk about, of course, uh, your language, Gaelic, as well, and stuff like that. So, um, when did you start the band? The band uh, started eleven years ago. So um, we were all, as we said, very young at the time, yeah. seven or eight. <laughs> you still are, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it started actually as um, a bit of a project when we were in, in university, in the University of Limerick. So we, um, we formed a band and from there it just has gone from strength to strength. And uh, we've, we've had some great opportunities and are not quite so busy now as we were, you know, seven or eight years ago. But uh, we've had lots of opportunities and lots of travel, Germany, America, Japan. And uh, it was it was it was a new a new thing with the six piece female band. We wanted yeah. something a bit different, and we were just friends who wanted to try something different. Mm -hmm. So, how would you describe your special band sound? Ooh, well, I suppose one of the main things we have is that we're six vocalists, and we sing together, and we all play music as well. And our instrumentation is a little bit different because we don't have any guitars or bow runs. So our backing comes from the harp and from the accordion bass. Yeah. And then I suppose we always keep the melody very, very strong. I suppose that's mainly it, isn't it? That's what yeah, it yeah. Is. yeah. Harmony singing seems yeah. to have gone down mm -hmm. well in with all the audiences and and yeah. songs in Irish and in English as well. Mm -hmm. So we sing in Gaelic as well as in, in yeah. English. Yeah, that's always very cool. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of string accompaniment, I think. You know, mm -hmm. because we don't have the. Um, the guitar, as Sheila says, that the fiddles do a lot of different things, and the accordion bass and the harp mm -hmm. as well would be a big feature of mm -hmm. our accompaniment. So that's, that's featuring a lot lately. Mm. Yeah. So, so it couldn't be more Irish, are eh? Yeah, it's, 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 it's very. Of yeah. 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 course, yeah. course, a, a guitar is actually not not a Celtic instrument, you it's know. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. In, in the meanwhile, it is. Yeah. 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 But when the Celtic music started many, many, many hundred years ago, mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah. much sure nobody in Ireland used a guitar. No. You know. Yes, <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 No, the harp is our oldest instrument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice to have that in the band. Yeah. So, uh, what does it mean to you uh, to be Irish? That's the hardest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm again I the first one, I of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, suppose I love being Irish. Um, yeah. Well, for me, a lot of it would be based around the language, the Gaelic language, because I was brought up speaking Irish with my family at home. I'm from Connemara. Right. So I think that, that my, my view of being Irish is always coloured by that and having a different language, um, I suppose. And the music is a massive part of it for us because we happen to be musicians. Mm -hmm. um, but we're often asked the question, would you live somewhere else? And I, I don't think I would live anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I, love, yeah. I love being in Ireland and being at home. But I don't know what it means for you Likewise, guys. Likewise, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't. It, it's lovely to travel, but it, it's always just so nice to go home. I certainly don't think I could live outside mm -hmm. Ireland. And we all have, I suppose, the six of us all came from quite different backgrounds, but we would have been very much 
rooted in the culture when in primary schools and our families and you know that's the culture I suppose is a huge part of it and you know kind of hope to pass it on to mm -hmm. our own gener next generations and you know so it's it's very special to us, you know. It's very yeah. there's a certain sense of humour as well. I was just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The humour is important <laughs> that you you know, you know you find different personalities throughout the world, but I think there's a particular humour that belongs to the Irish and uh, yeah, I suppose that's part of our identity yeah. as well. Hmm. And some people have it more than others of course, but um, yeah, I think it's a it's an important part as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Even we had a lot of fun till now. Uh, try to explain uh, the Irish humour. Sarcasm, sarcasm, yeah. Yeah. very <laughs> sarcasm, yeah, yeah, yeah. and kind of quite. Well, this is the right point to yeah. do that. <laughs> quite rhetorical humour, you might say something and mean the direct opposite. Or yes, yeah. yeah, and I don't think. Well, again, you can't be stereotypical. I'm sure there's a lot of people who can't, but I think in general, all six of us can certainly laugh at ourselves yeah. and you know be Absolutely. able to yeah. you know ha and at each other yeah. Fun yeah. and at each other yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you ever met a guy and you you used your humor and he just uh didn't understand what you mean or or he was oh, yes. probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah really not yeah. amused about that or so yeah. um with the sarcasm yes. yeah sometimes people take you look quite literally yeah. and it you could be sarcasm. insulting when you really didn't you know you make oh yeah, a yeah, joke yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 somebody irish would get it straight away yeah, yeah. 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 Translate yeah. Sometimes yes way. absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well uh you see we have a lot of fun here at the studio but i'm pretty much sure you can't wait to listen to one of the songs and we have a few videos and so we should watch one of them right, yeah, you know? yeah. and we will be back in just a few minutes and so hopefully you will be there as well
mistake can't say it was. <laughs> well, this is really awesome stuff, and to see her live on stage, uh, this is pure Irish feeling. Well, we should talk about the latest city. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell us a wee bit about uh, why did you do a, a new CD and, and why did you sing these songs and stuff yeah. like that, you know? Okay, um, well, I suppose it's been, has it been six years since we made a CD before, before mm -hmm. this, you know, so we felt for ourselves just, you know, to get new material and right. just, you know, we, we always said we would make, we would tr try and make a third CD when it was mm -hmm. possible, you know, so we've, we, it took us about maybe 12 months to record because you know, we had to do it at weekends and during holidays and when people could meet and so on. And mm -hmm. it's not so easy to practice together mm -hmm. now anymore because we all live in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. So it took us about 12 months to record, but um, we're delighted with it. And uh, it, it's special to us, I suppose. We, we did a lot of research on the songs and the mm -hmm. tunes and some of the girls composed music for it. Claire composed a lovely reel. Elaine composed a polka. Um, Catherine composed music for it. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was we tried to put as much of ourselves into it as possible. And uh, we're happy with it. We're delighted with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's called um, Inaun Tra, um, which is uh, is Irish uh, for well-timed. And that was a phrase that was in one of the songs that Elaine sings. Mm -hmm. So just by coincidence, it was well-timed when we recently had a German <laughs> tour. The CD arrived the day before we left yeah. for Germany, so it was well timed. Too. Just a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. It's always very tight for Irish bands. The CD never arrives until the day yeah. of the launch yeah. or the day that you're going to go on yeah. tour. I, I think it has nothing to do with Ireland. It's a, a musician yeah. thing, yes. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, we really took our time with this one and enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Because I suppose our first CD, that's what, 10 years ago now, is it? Yeah. yeah. So at that stage, we really wanted to get a CD out yeah. there. And yeah. then the second one, the follow-up to that. But this time we took our time with yeah. it and really, really enjoyed the process. And we recorded it in Dingle, in Kerry. Ah. And it's a really, really beautiful spot with Donna Hennessy. Yeah. And yeah, we had a great time down there, mm -hmm. a few sessions and meeting up with friends and then going into the studio and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, and where can I buy a CD? Online, I suppose. Yes, so online yeah. for now. Yeah. Um, our website is www.liadan.ie, L-I-A-D-A-N.ie. And uh, it will be also available on iTunes and should be available very soon on iTunes. Yeah. Um, our three CDs. That's that's really how we sell internationally is from our website. Yeah. And the so best way is anyway to uh, order it just on your website. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 From our website. Yeah. yeah. So uh, guys and girls out there, just do it. Order a CD because mm -hmm. I have one. It's a really cool one. And um, well, we should watch another video. And uh, while we uh, watch the video, probably you can, I don't know. Check out the website. Yeah, check out the <laughs> website. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, anyway read the address here, you know. It's a kind of magic. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, then we will be back very, very soon. And if you uh, probably ask yourself, well, I saw live on stage uh, so many bunny lasses and you have just uh, uh, three of them at the studio. The reason is we have a f really small one. <laughs> But later on, the whole band will be here and they will do a song, yes. <laughs> yeah. an a cappella one, and you will love it, absolutely love it. Uh, that's for sure. So uh, just watch this video and uh, then, yeah, order the CD. That's <laughs> what you have to do. <laughs> She cried, her darling, oh, 
Thank you. Welcome back again to our late and special here on Chotten TV. And I'm pretty much sure you love this video because we all did here and, and it's really cool stuff uh, to see the body lasses from Ireland live on stage. So uh, what are your plans for the next weeks, months, centuries? <laughs> well, like we said, we just um, launched our CD. We got it a few weeks ago. So we're going to be launching that on the radios over the summer yeah. and hopefully doing a few gigs and then probably our big launch, our big party will be in Dolan's in Limerick in September. So that's a very cool. special yeah. venue to us. It's one of the best venues, I suppose, in Munster, really. Yeah, so it's country, in Limerick yeah. City. Yeah. And we started off there with our very first gigs kind of when we were starting in Limerick. So we'll go back there um, and we'll, we'll have a big party and a big launch party and in some other parts of Ireland as well. Yeah. And then we'll see what happens from there. Yes. If you live oh, in Limerick, you, yeah, you should <laughs> pop yes, in, yes, you yeah. know. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have a Dublin gig as well at some yeah. stage. Yeah. Dublin sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds yeah. actually like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're more than welcome. Yeah. 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 We'll have the details on our website, of course. Yes, yeah. Yeah. they're coming That's up for the, yeah. 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 the website again, just read mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we're open to lots of ideas if anybody else wants to book us for the summer. Yeah, yeah. You know where to contact us. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. just follow the link and check the mm -hmm. guys out yeah. on their website. Yeah. And of course you can send us uh, your uh, email uh, to us as well if you want to, but the best way should be directly to the girls. You all grew up as musicians, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tell us a wee bit about your, your life as a musician. For me, I always feel it more when I don't play music. If I go for three or four days, sometimes a couple of weeks, and I don't play the harp or I don't sing, I think there's something wrong with me, what is it? And then I say, ah, I didn't play. So it's just such a massive part of, yeah. of, of mm. being for, for us, for all of us. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, we play in different sessions and informally, and then there's the concerts, and then you'd be singing, I'd be singing away to myself as, as well. You know, So it is a very important part of, of all of our lives, yeah. really. And particularly when it's a, a folk music and a really old, traditional music that we have that connection with yeah. the people that went before us, particularly in the songs. I think when, we, when I sing old Irish songs, I really so feel that connection. So you grew up and your parents sang with your uh, um, My father sang a little bit, but no, I would have learned from local singers in the community. Oh, see, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my, my grandfather used to play the button accordion, mm -hmm. but he actu I actually never met him. He had died before I was born, so oh. it really wasn't... Um, it was respected very much in my family, but neither of my parents played. It was really um, a teacher in the primary school. It was, it was a big tradition of every child age seven learned the tin whistle and mm -hmm. he lent me a yeah. fiddle and you know so it was, it was really through him and then different teachers in the area mm -hmm. and you know it depends on on the area i suppose and yeah. we were kind of lucky enough to have traditional music in the schools that we went to yeah. mm -hmm. so that was a big part of it yeah. 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 yeah 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 i think locality is very important i was saying that my grandfather would have played but um i didn't know him at all but um yeah the locality was very important it would have been musicians in the part of the country that, that claire and i are from from east galway would have been a very well known area for you know fiddle music, uh, but when we grew up, it, it, you know there didn't seem to be that much around us. But um, at the same time, there were opportunities to go to to music teachers, and it kind of built from there. But going back to like what do you think of? I think often with the songs, you know, um, we often laugh about the themes of the songs. There's so many songs that we have that have unrequited love, you know. Yeah. So unar vida te liba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love and war, of course. Yeah. 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 Typical theme yeah. as well. We're love that's not returned, but um, suppose everybody can connect with. So if you're, even if you're not connecting with the exact theme of the song, you're connecting with something similar or something tragic in your own life, and or you know something that 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 kind of brings the meaning of the song mm -hmm. across. And uh, then the tunes, yeah, the tunes. I suppose it's just life to them, and um, mm. yeah, and it's about the, the energy you create between us. I think when we're playing the tunes, is a, it's very important. Mm. You know, it always but lifts so the mood. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. We d you know, when we meet and we sing, it's always such a, yeah. oh, that's you know, or yeah. you know, we play a few tunes, and it it always will just reminds us of good times I suppose yeah. and it, it's just for everybody uh, you know music will definitely lift your spirits you know and yeah. it, it, the community thing is really important yeah. we have our own little community within the band and yeah. we're, we're kind of like sisters in a way yeah. Yeah. and you know we, we get that special thing yeah. when we play together mm. so it's a wee yeah. bit of family thing it as is well. absolutely yeah. 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 yeah certainly yeah after this long yeah. you know yeah. I, originally in the band my I would have known Deirdre the accordion player and Sheila and I went to college together 
Claire and Elaine went to college together. Oh, okay. Catherine was also local. We used to play music with her as kids. So it w there was a connection between us all. Yeah, so we've yeah. all known each other for a long time. You yeah, know? So mm. behind the scenes, I can imagine a lot of girly stuff as well. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. What <laughs> kind of girly stuff? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure we should maybe leave this theme alone. <laughs> and not talking at the same time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we never stop talking, ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said, I think, you know, when we're playing the music, you know, if we haven't met in a while, yes, there's a lot of talking, then we play a tune and we kind of go, ah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. Good positive sounds, you know. Yeah. That, you know, it's gen yeah. genuine enjoyment, like, of yeah. the, the music. What's the reason you have uh, just uh, female uh, band members? It was actually by accident. Mm. We, the way the band <laughs> started, <laughs> the way the band yeah. started, oh, yeah. it was Valerie was doing a performance for a university. We were doing a yeah. the university masters at the time. She was doing mm. a performance and she asked three of us to play with her. And we were sitting in Valerie's bedroom. Mm. We lived together for a while in Nimerick and we were sitting there practicing and playing. We're like, oh God, this is great. We'd love to do this all the time. And yeah. then we said, oh, we'll start a band. And we did that as part of a project. And then we asked Claire and Elaine, would they be yeah. interested as well? Yeah. So it was friendship really. And we yeah. just happened to play together and it, it just made sense yeah. straight away. Yeah, yeah, and as well, like it, it suited us, you know, I mean, if you had been a guitar player, we just happened to be friends at the time yeah. and then it kind of worked well for us because I suppose, are we considered kind of, you know, we're, we're tr traditional, you know, yeah. and, you know, yeah. so it, it just worked well for us because mm. it was something a bit different. Yeah. yeah. We, we didn't purposely exclude the men, we just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, we didn't, and we didn't purposely exclude guitars, but... I think now we're working on yeah. all of that, I suppose. Yeah, sometimes yeah, those things work, they just work. Well, yeah. anyway, it's yeah. great as it is, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. should yeah. not yeah. change yeah. anything. No men allowed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or the, we, we do have a, a friend of ours, Brian Morrissey, played oh, some yeah. percussion on our, our, our new CD yeah. and our second CD. So yeah. very subtle. He's, he's an excellent musician and it was nice and subtle, but it, it, you know, it added to some of yeah. the, the faster stuff, you know. So yeah. that was lovely. How did you grow up in a country with two totally different... Uh, languages, you know. Okay. Let's talk about how yeah. how important is the Irish Gaelic for you today? Okay. You know, well, that's yeah. it's a complicated question, really, yeah. because certain areas in Ireland yeah. um, they're called an un Gaeltacht, the Gaeltacht, and that they're Irish-speaking areas mm -hmm. where the language hasn't died out. Yeah. And then there are other areas where the language isn't spoken, maybe in the community, mm -hmm. but people learn it in school, and people just sometimes choose to go make that effort and speak. But that what does language, it mean, yeah. learn it uh, in school as as a yeah. subject? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But for me, English was my second language. I yeah, didn't have any English until I was four mm -hmm. or five. So it was just no different. All my friends spoke Irish. My parents spoke Irish, and mm -hmm. it was just the way it was. It was just part so of life. So, and was yeah. that a, a political reason uh, to learn English as the second language? No, it was just that in the community I lived in, Irish is yeah. the main language. Yeah, um, okay. But th there always is a political element to it as well. My father wasn't an Irish speaker. He was an English speaker from Dublin. But mm. my mother is from uh, the wild west of Connemara, very far, far west in a really remote place um, called Camus. Yeah. And she was brought up with Irish. But he decided to learn Irish and he met my mother. And so it was, mm. a, a, it was a decision for him, but not for her. She didn't speak any English till she was 14. Mm. Um, but then uh, without the Gaeltacht, it is, it is a, I suppose, a decision people yes, make to yeah. speak Irish or not to. Yeah. Like I'm not from an Irish speaking part, I'm from County Limerick, which, you know, my parents wouldn't have any Irish or, well, they would have basic Irish, but mm -hmm. I mean, children learn it from age of four and, you know, you learn that until you're 17 or 18 and, but unfortunately, a lot of people still leave secondary school with, you know, mm. not that much yeah. spoken Irish, you know, because mm -hmm. depending on where you're living, if you're not using it, um, or some people don't make the effort, obviously, you know, but I mean, we should be. You know, it's such pity because I mean, it's such a special thing. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. we don't want it dying out, and you know, th th there's only you know a few Gael talked areas, yeah. and you know, mm -hmm. it's can't be relying on you know a small pr proportion of the population to keep it going. You know, especially when we we can all, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. participate and and you know. I think the language as well is very closely related to to the music, as we said mm -hmm. earlier. So I think we all appreciate anybody who has music. In, the, in their being kind of appreciates the language as well even if you don't speak it you know fluently or don't speak it from when you were when you were a child um, so there's all of that but there's a lot of bodies you know in <coughs> in Ireland at the moment like Gael School and a whole movement of you know promoting Irish language and um, so learning Irish from a very early age learning it that, that as, as the main language um, um, from four years of age so that has done a lot for the language but it's, it's still it's quite a difficult one mm -hmm. and it's a pity to see that sometimes as Valerie said people leave school and they don't have Irish and there's 
some people mm. think there's no need to mm-hmm. use it mm. or whatever but mm. you know it's, uh, it's up, to, it's up to some people to you know just kind of you know to, to keep it as mm. prosperous as possible and some radio stations are excellent and mm-hmm. so there's a lot out there just mm. to mm. embrace it keep you know, yeah, it's, yeah, you know yeah. a lot of people do and others don't I suppose mm. yeah reality. yes the reality yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you want to uh, listen to an Irish song live on stage, then we have the right video now here on Shotten TV. And so uh, we watch this video and then we will be back here at the studio. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, we're Leathan and we're delighted to be here on Shot and TV with Basil. And uh, if you want to hear some more of our music, our music is on www.leathan.ie and we hope you enjoy the show. Well, that was cool, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely cool. How important is the language uh, still at this planet? Do we need Gaelic? Well, I suppose, do we need any language? It's, it's a massive question, really. Um, but I suppose the Irish language is a very old language. It's thousands of oh. years old. And it was, all, it was in Ireland a lo- long, long time before English was in Ireland. Um, but now, I suppose, it's uh, a question people have to ask themselves. Do we need minority languages at all? But for me, I think it's very, very, very important um, because we, we can speak English. Obviously, all Irish people can speak English um, and a lot of German people can speak English as well. But I think when you're from an English speaking country, when you live in an English speaking country, people mightn't um, see the importance of speaking the native language because when you go abroad, everybody can speak um, can speak English. Uh-huh. But for me personally, it's about holding a connection with our heritage because I don't think you can understand yourself completely without, for example, our um, the place names. All the place names in Ireland, even when they're in English, they're completely based on the Irish. And the Irish in the place names is very descriptive and describes the place itself. Mm. And then that's just translated to English, but only, um, I suppose, the pronunciation of it. So to understand, I think, the heritage, I think it's very, very important to keep it alive, to understand the music, just to understand ourselves even. But for me, anyway, it's different for everybody. These questions are different for everybody, I think. Well, mm. if you would be such close as I am, then you would see the sparkle <laughs> in her <laughs> eyes while she talk about her mother tongue, you know. <laughs> and I feel a wee bit bad because I, 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 I asked this question and I absolutely agree with yeah. you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It is, of course, very, very um, important to, to use and, mm. and to keep your mother tongue and, of course, Irish 
there is a need to, to keep your language. Absolutely. What, what do you say about that? Yes, as Sheila said there, you know, in relation to the minority languages, you know, people, you know, we read in the papers at home often, you know, it's a dying language and, mm -hmm. you know, some teenagers don't want to learn it. They don't see the, the point. Where will they use it if they go abroad? But as Sheila said, it's, it's our language and, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if we don't hold on to it, nobody else will, you know, so it's right. really important. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully it will, you know, there is like it's not that mm. like there is a, a good proportion of the population mm. that do obviously speak mm. and, and respect it. And, you know, but it, it, it is it's vital, I think, mm. for our country. Yeah. I think as well, you know, in relation back to the music again, I think that it's um, even it's a very musical language. Um, there's a wealth in particular um, associated with the Irish language songs. So I remember a particular time I was teaching singing in, in U at the University of Limerick. And I, I was teaching various students from abroad and I had one particular student from Japan. So I was teaching some songs in English and then she said she wanted to try so a song in Irish. So she can't speak Irish. But um, we ended up you know, teaching the song phonetically and I told her what it meant. And by the end of it, she was saying, my gosh, this is just, I just way prefer this. There's the sound, there's the wealth of poetry in, in the, all those songs, and the wealth of sa the sound of the language is just, when you get into the, into the Irish language songs, I think they can grab you like nothing else, you know? Aye. And I just thought that was just an excellent, uh, an excellent example mm -hmm. because she didn't want to sing any traditional songs in English after that, you know? Yeah. And, and I feel the same, like, you know, I particularly, you know, I, I learned so much of my Irish from the songs as well, mm. you know, from the, the, the old Chanel songs. And uh, there's poetry there in those songs that you wouldn't learn in mm -hmm. school, you know. And, uh, you know, I can really, really appreciate, I think, the, the mm. filioch, the poetry of those of those songs when, mm -hmm. when, when you're singing them and when you're, when you're aware of, yeah. of the language. So, yeah. And it's very important to us as a band to always feature the Irish songs, you know, mm -hmm. um, in particular for Elaine and Sheila. The three of us would be, you know, would, would do lead vocals on the CDs and um, we always, you know, if we have six songs, there will always be three English, three Irish, you know. Mm -hmm. Sheila will always sing in Irish, Elaine always has an Irish one. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but they carry that. Um, they do lovely harmonies, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, it's very it's important, important, important that we... It's part of the identity, it is, I yeah. of the band yes, to have yeah. that. You know. mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Sheila would always speak Irish, so would Elaine. They mm -hmm. would have sentences in Irish at a gig in Ireland, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Before uh, we watch the next video, you have to ask this question. I actually, I don't have to, but um, mm -hmm. I really want to. And when you are on tour, mm -hmm. and when you are late at night, I don't know, mm -hmm. probably uh, just on your own uh, as, as, as friends, mm -hmm. do you speak English or, or Gaelic? English would be the, the language of communication yeah. that we had. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, so, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it makes sense, or because some not, people yeah. do not understand yeah. uh, the Irish. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. Well, yeah. not all, I'm not fluent. Like, yeah, I, I have, I I have school Irish, and I, I can understand, but I, find, I don't find it as easy as these two would talk yeah, to each other fluently. I, I, no. I understand, and, and yeah. And yeah. same for the others in the band. We would have, we would have Irish, mm -hmm. and we could speak it, but yeah. not as fluently. I think yeah. she made a point a while back about, you know, it's how how you meet a particular person and we met through English so yeah. yes. the natural follow on from that is that yeah. we continue to speak in English yes, yeah. mm -hmm. but there would be people that then that I would have met through Irish and I always would meet, speak to them you know in Irish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how do you dream how do I dream? Yeah. Um, that is a very good question, and people often ask me as well, what language do I think in? You know, yeah. if you think in a language, it depends. Um, see, a lot of my life is I live my life through the Irish language. I lecture in the yeah. language, and it's, it's just my whole life is the Irish language, All as you right. can probably tell. Um, so when I'm in that setting, I will think through Irish and I'll dream in, in Irish. But then if I'm taken out of that, sometimes it, it's more kind of mixed up. Um, but another thing that's interesting is that the way you phrase things in Irish and the way you come at the world is Aye. different yeah. to any other language and all languages are like that and I think that comes back to the, yeah, the, the yeah, question of absolutely. why it's important to hold things, hold on to languages. It's because it gives you just another, well, I suppose, a world view. It gives you a different perspective on things, even just the turn of phrase of something really small Aye. that you kind of envisage it completely differently. Mm. Yeah, so I have two parts of my brain <laughs> that are kind of separate. Cool stuff and a really, really lovely interview. Absolutely cool. And I, I'm, I'm totally sure all you fans out there uh, around this fantastic blue planet do enjoy uh, this uh, Bonnie Lassie from Ireland. And I do, of course. <laughs> and so we should watch this video and then we come back uh, just in a few minutes.
Welcome back again here on Shotten TV. And uh, well, it's still a pleasure to have you here. I hope you you love our tiny studio. It's fantastic, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's been a lovely, lovely afternoon. It's been really nice, yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. I, I love it as well. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your music. Mm -hmm. um, when you write a song, why do you write a song? Why do you write it a new tune? Do you have not enough tunes mm -hmm. on island? Is there a need to do that? Um, I think, I suppose, just for our own creativity, I mean, there is a wealth of traditional music there. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, people say, oh, is there any need for any new stuff? There's so much there already, I suppose. For us, um, you know, sometimes we, we just, you know, would jot down tunes that would come to our heads, something that we'd be humming or, you know, Claire's written a couple of songs. And, like, I suppose when we're recording CDs, we're conscious of trying to find material that hasn't yet been recorded, mm -hmm. just so it's different, you know, and just... Mm -hmm. So we, we have written stuff that and then we have re we've we've re recorded it then just just to have it ourselves, you know, mm. but just for our own creativity. Mm. And yeah, I think so mainly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then often in the songs, you know, that, you know Claire has written a, a couple, as Valerie said, but often we revive songs that, you know, that might be written down in collections and that wouldn't have been recorded at all or, you know, recently. Aye. So in a sense, that composing, I don't know, but it's, you know, you, you might revive the song and put a different melody to yes, it or put yeah. your own you know, your own touch in it and then add instrumentation and, you know, um, so you're making your own of the song. So why do you do it? Because it's really interesting to do it. Yeah. And, and yeah, and as Val said, it's, it's, it's like um, try, trying to create some, something new in a sense um, for ourselves and for the audience and, yeah, for listeners. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you try to sound then like a traditional? But I suppose you, w when you're working or, or playing in a traditional music uh, 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 tradition, you're always trying to work within the parameters of that tradition, right. yeah. but also uh -huh. trying to do something new. So it's, it's that constant question of the old and the new coming together and moving on and trying yeah. to create something different, but it still has to be, but everybody has different parameters as well. Like yeah. traditional musicians, we all have different, uh, we yeah. call it the line in a way. So sometimes you might cross the line and it might, mightn't sound traditional to us anymore. So you're mm. constantly trying to, I suppose, negotiate that, whether it's yeah. too modern or too, mm. yeah, it's, it's... We ourselves would have quite different taste, mm -hmm. I suppose, in what what I might think is is too out there for a traditional jig. Yeah. Sheila might say, oh no, I think, I, you know, yeah. so we, we all have our own different tastes, but I think as a band, we do have a line that we, oh, we, okay, we like yeah. to keep yeah. it you know, as, as tradition, old, yeah. old traditional sounding as we can, you know. And yeah. about in, uh, in a few hundred years, you know, yeah. you have to imagine, then these people will say, wow, there was yeah. some band yeah. a few hundred yeah. years ago. <laughs> they wrote this fantastic yeah. melody, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that is the same we do, uh, we do now, yeah. you know. Yeah. We play all the old tunes and, yeah. and we think uh, even the tune is actually not too good, you know. Yeah. We, we yeah. use it because it's in traditional. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. time yeah. flies spy and yeah, probably in yeah. 50 exactly. years yeah. you're still on stage yeah. <laughs> and the quality of the mp3 tracks yeah. in years to exactly. come why go this oh my gosh you can barely hear that yeah yeah, yeah. 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 that goes listening to the old recordings we're trying yeah. to find Indeed. old tunes and yeah um, you know it's kind of difficult isn't it? so i wonder how different will it be in yeah. 50 years yeah. But I think it is always really important to look back and then to look forward. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. always the way that you, mm. you'll find your, I suppose, yeah. your own your own place within that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. When you're on stage, what do you try to transfer to the crowd? What is it? Is it uh, actually history? Is it, uh, I don't know, party? Yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose a little bit of, okay, we obviously want to create an atmosphere and um, we do want to, you know, pass on the, the history of the music and, you know, we would... You know, we'd be quite conscious of, you know, naming the tunes and, you know, talking a little bit about, you know, the songs, this Sheila, when especially the Shano songs or if I'm singing a, a, an old folk song, you know, you like to tell the story. Peop I think right. people like that. They like to hear what you're singing about. Um, the type, yeah, so the history and obviously a bit of crack. Everyone yeah. wants to yeah, everyone wants add to a gig. Because yeah. into my head is the enjoyment. Yeah. Like, and yeah. if we enjoy it, if we have music that's kind of arranged well and we enjoy playing it, then it, that transfers straight away, mm. you know, yeah. and, and, and hopefully people enjoy it. They tend to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The German audience is so far. Till now it works yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
The band just told me 11 years ago they started the band. They still look actually like about 20, 25. Wow, thank you. <laughs> and so, yeah. so you started as, as kiddies, you know, exactly. as yeah. children. Yeah. Straight out of primary school. <laughs> yeah, so, so. And so we should uh, watch another video. No, and you can see all the teenage of life on stage, <laughs> you know. And uh, then we will be back in, in a few minutes. Okay, just watch this one. She was not sailing but a day or two When she spied a French ship and all her crew Saying, Captain, Captain, come tell me true Oh, does my love Willie sail aboard with you? What color hair has your Willie, dear? What kind of clothes does your Willie wear? It's a bright silk jacket and it's trimmed all round For he is drowned, I am greatly feared In yon green island as we pass by Oh, we lost my lord and your willy boy Well, she wrung her hands and she tore her hair She was like a lady all in despair She dashed her small boat against the rocks Saying, what will I do? My love is lost Woo! Welcome back to Shotten TV, and we are still here. We, that's me, and all the lovely lassies from Ireland. Well, you you told us so many stories about your life, and and I'm um, I'm pretty much sure uh, your future will be great. Uh, I really enjoy to see your life on stage, to be honest, and I can't wait to see you again. Wow. So probably I will come over to to Ireland uh, very very soon. Who knows? Great, Who knows? great, <laughs> great. Yeah. Well. That was our Leerden special here on Shotten TV. We had a lot of fun, as you already should uh, know. And uh, if you want to find out m more about the girls, just follow the link and check other girls out on their website. And there you can buy the CDs. And you should go for the live concerts. If you have uh, really, really the possibility to do, to do that, you should do that because it's really great. And uh, I mentioned it uh, earlier, the whole band is here. Unfortunately, our, our studio is... Uh, <laughs> It's not big cozy. enough. Yeah, it's cozy. 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 <laughs> it's cozy. I, I, yeah, that's, that's a good word. I have a cozy studio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, so we will see now on um, a fantastic new song from the late CD. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Can you uh, tell us a wee bit about this song? Yeah, well, yeah. It's called the Irish Girl, and it, um, we got it in an old collection of books that was made about a hundred years ago in County Limerick, which is where some of the members of the band are from. And um, we think it hasn't been recorded by anybody else anyway. And um, it was collected by a man called uh, Patrick Weston Joyce. So the yeah. Irish Guard is the name of it. And then we do it as an a cappella version. So, yeah. 
fantastic. So just a wee break and what can I say? Thanks for coming along and it was really Thank great you. to have your company. Had a great time. Thank you. Fantastic Thanks for interview us, and I wish you all the best. Thanks Keep up your much. level, you know. Yes, <laughs> very much. Thank <laughs> really you. Cute. Okay, so then see ya, bye bye. And that was Shotten TV. And this is Leodon here at the studio. Bye.